Hey, time for some Type 40. Type 40 here exclusively on the Facebook channel with me, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. Welcome back to the channel. Type 40 Extra is our before show, after show, and in between show. It's all the podcasts and other live streams that we put out covering the entire Hooniverse for your delectation. I've managed to rope back a couple of the regulars here for this one. This time, I've got... Uh, yeah, where are they? Story of Girl Sarah Graham and Charlotte Shields here Hello. too. Hello, everybody. Couldn't wait, could we? After the excitement of last night, fortnight's <laughs> worth of build-up to get stuck into this, and uh, yeah, here we are again. So the other day we had we had the uh, the, the uh, tingle tra trailers, didn't we? We were tingled and we were tantalised by the BBC ladies. Now, uh, let's refresh our memories of that, shall we? Of what got us worked up into this state in the first place. Where are we? Oh, all this fuzz and excitement. So that clears that up. <laughs> <laughs> it was so clear and obvious, wasn't it? It was, yes. <laughs> of course, all of this is supposed to be uh, zhuzhing us up, isn't it, for the 60th anniversary. We've got three specials coming later in the year, haven't we? They've said autumn, but we're kind of taking it as taking it as November, aren't we, Charlotte? We're guessing that because of the obvious link. It would be daft if they didn't, to be honest, <laughs> at this rate. It's not the 60th anniversary unless it's in September. <laughs> unless it's in September. <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's in November, is it, Sarah? <laughs> Mm. So we went through the other day. We were doing a Type Forty live live stream when we we went through. We decoded all of those Tingle trailers, didn't we? And we had we had a lot of fun with that, I think. And uh, yeah, I couldn't wait to see what was going to come next because everything that we got in there once we went through all the little encryptions and all the for, all the binary stuff and the backward text all did state very, very clearly that we were getting something on Eurovision night on the 13th of May, 2023, and get it, boy, did we ever. So are either of you Eurovision Song Contest viewers normally, would you usually watch this watch this uh, festival of bad taste that they insist on inflicting on us every year? It's my family viewing. It's my mum <laughs> loves it. <Disclaimer. laughs> so we all sit down and watch it usually, unless it's like a ridiculously late, slot they put it on so it wasn't inconveniencing you too much then no. Sarah you're like me aren't you you've you've uh, long since declined a tv yeah, license haven't you? It, it, it used to be fun and then it got political just like everything else so uh, yeah and i was out yesterday as some of you may have seen on twitter anyway so yeah, yeah. I, uh, I i'm i am missed it going out live well as as is often the case with official BBC Doctor Who related things, I think we know now, don't we, that when as soon as the stuff premieres, Charlotte, it's not long until it's on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. So you don't have to watch it live now anyway. I think it's lost, now that they do it like that, I think it's lost some of the coziness of old television. It's another reason why I don't miss it so much. It's also also bland and so corporate. Uh, but it does mean that we can just, or those of us who who don't have a TV license, we can watch these trailers perfectly legally within a minute of them being on screen, mm -hmm. just by by booting up YouTube or something like that, and, and there it all is. So this, yeah, we are following up on <laughs> on Saturday's grand revelation. Uh, the Eurovision Song Contest was held in Liverpool this year, and as always, broadcast to a huge global audience. And the BBC had been tingle teasing us for the last two weeks. The two weeks of those little things dropped here and there in between the shows and it didn't take a genius to work out that it was all pointing to a, a brand new trailer for the 60th anniversary appearing at some point during Eurovision night now I imagine that it was going to be something of a centrepiece because obviously it's on the, the song contest is on for about three or four hours isn't it so I thought they might put it in the middle when the most people were watching but they just whacked it at the front of the show didn't they we're, yeah we're and do, you the know what was, do you want to know who introduced the fact that we were getting a trailer who was it? The one show, Dan. Oh no! Yeah, oh. <laughs> <hate> you, Dan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's but isn't the one show? Oh, it's not like three or four times a week, is it? Is it? Oh, I don't. But it was basically. I don't know if it was the one show just being like the warm up act for your vision, but it was 
Alex Jones, whatever her name is, and the same presenter who usually do that show. <laughs> So they could have premiered it really at any at any time. I, I have read that apparently, eight million people watched it, saw the the song contest from the start, and so were were watching presumably when this trailer dropped, which is a a decent. That's just a UK audience. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been streamed elsewhere in the world as well because it was a the entire thing this time was a BBC production uh, for the people who who are still licensed fee payers. That's where it. That's where it all went. So I suppose the, you know, here we are. We've waited all this time. We've had all these teasers, and then they drop it. What? We, I'll start with you, Charlotte. What were your reactions to it then? You're the one who watched it live with the family. It was pretty short, wasn't it? Yeah, you blinked and you missed it. It was, I really, because I thought beforehand, we'd had the shorter trailers. We'd had the sort of... Yeah piecemeal type of thing so I really thought mm. oh this is going to be the actual first proper one because we've already had like we had one at Christmas didn't we then mm. we had the little teasers so they've already done this sort of here's a snippet of approach and I was like right this is your first proper trailer and it told me nothing like there was one scene that I can remember from it but it really was just like it really felt like Here's a load of random shots put together. Like there was no proper through line. Like it was just like, oh, here's tenant, here's this, here's that, and it was over with. It reminds me that the word, I suppose, is, is teaser. This is yet another teaser, then, Sarah. Because yeah. a teaser, it is as Charlotte describes, isn't it? It's fairly, I won't use the word slapdash. But teasers tend to be a kind of a fast mon montage, don't they? That sell yeah. you... I, the, the, the difference that I believe is that they sell you on a look and a tone mm -hmm. in a teaser, but a trailer uh, kind of takes you, walks you a certain distance into the narrative mm -hmm. of a film or TV show. Is that... Do you yeah, see well, yeah, it gets more content-driven and, you know, which characters are going to appear, at least what some characters are. Uh, yeah, I, I mean... God bless you, Charlotte. I, I just feel so sorry for you. It's a good job that you do actually enjoy watching Eurovision. I thought, and my heart went out for all these people <laughs> that were tuning in. <laughs> and there, were, I was, there was a part of me that was just like, is that it? <laughs> be, be good. But it was because of the build-up and because, you know, it, loads of fans had been going through and analysing and picking it up and... You know, that transmission at the end that pointed to Eurovision and all the excitement. And then we just got another teaser with basically the same the same stuff in it. The only thing that was a bit... We got a little bit more dialogue and we got that scene when Donna Pokes beat the meep in the eye. And, yeah. uh, and then again, all the things like Catherine Tate being part of Eurovision, I really thought, you know, she was going to kill two birds with one stone. And yes, she's there to award the scores, but she would be the one to present it. I thought that was like, you know, a canny bit of... Uh, a sort of interlude whereby they yeah. could... Because obviously by the time the, the votes are coming in on the Eurovision Song Contest, it must be its peak audience hadn't it because that's that's where people get really outraged isn't it that's when, that's when the s really hits the fan yeah. with that show <laughs> and i i thought that would be where they would put it i didn't think they would put it at the beginning they would put, put it you know as we're waiting for the results to come in um so yeah did it, Catherine Tate mention it do you know sarah did she no. even mention the fact that she was in doctor she said Alan Z at one point. It's Charlotte. I've seen her. I, say, I think at this point we were like going close to bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she did say Alan Z um, when she was awarding some points. I can't remember which country it was. But again, that was just a clip that I saw, um, you know, this morning. Um, so, yeah, so it was just like <laughs> this like self-contained thing. I just thought, what a waste to have in. Catherine Tate, there's somebody who's associated with the show. Yeah, I must say she's um, the, the very ample Catherine Tate. They're good for her. Oh, she looks gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> looks like she's having a good time. But yeah, it is a bit strange to <laughs> that they didn't capitalise on that. Same from from what I've heard. But yeah, let's look at some. Let's look at what we did. What we did get. So <laughs> intercut in between bits of crackling interference and clips from stuff we've already seen. There, there were 
bits and bobs. And I, in all fairness, I think this is somewhat of a halfway house because when it does pick up, we see we see a scene somewhere setting the scene, don't we? So we're in we're in, in Cyber Dog in Camden, in London. And uh, we see the doctor sort of walk walk around the place. And then we see him talking to this young woman. We, uh, we see another familiar face. We see Donna. And then we see something streaking across the sky. And it does, the impression is given, at least we, we're having a scene set for us. Mm -hmm. But I think that's as much as, as a narrative we, we really get here. After that, it goes just as you, as you say, doesn't it, Sarah? And all, the, all these scenes, I mean, in my view, the way this has been, uh, been shot... The special effects work there with the the crashing spaceship. It's clearly, well, I think we know whose spaceship that is. This, just like the trailer we got at Christmas, it looks several steps up from anything. I mean, never mind uh, the original Russell T Davies era. It looks several steps up from from the stuff that wrapped last year under under Chris Chibnall. Uh, but again, we've seen these characters before. I think Yasmin Finney was in the Christmas trailer very, very yes, briefly. Yes, Yeah. Uh, but obviously Donna was in it. <clears throat> uh, Tennant was in it. Uh, and so it isn't really anything new. It does feel like a bit of a remix. I talked about this on Type 40 Live, didn't I? That I, I felt that they needed with this. It's been, it's been five months since the Christmas trailer. Obviously, we're now in May. And uh, so it, it really was time to up the ante somehow, Charlotte, a face, a voice, something emblemic of a sense of occasion. Obviously, yeah, I suppose they may, they may be re uh, re uh, reasoning, Charlotte, that putting David Tennant and Catherine Tate back together again, that that's occasion enough. The fans may, not, I don't know. The problem is, is, all the stuff we saw in this has been announced ages ago, it feels like now. It feels like... We've known for ages Ken yeah. and, and Tate were coming back. We've seen Yasmin Finney in a few other things now in trailers. We've seen Beat the Meep. Like all the stuff we've seen in this trailer is because, and that's why it's not working, I think, for some people I've spoke to. You're, you're right, it needed that sense of, sort of, God, you've got to see this because there's something new in it. It needed that sense of, here's a brand new character. Here's even just a bit of a hint of even and it could even be a, a, a look at some of the monsters more because we we still don't really know a lot about the monsters we just know about beat the meep yeah like there could have um, been something to be the new centerpiece to this and it just didn't have it and i'm just i'm flummoxed i'm really mystified at the way they're marketing right now it's the 60th year it should have ceremony about it. It should have that sense of occasion. And it honestly just feels like to me that like they're treating this like just a normal series coming out. And it shouldn't feel like that. It should be this big like homecoming. And it, I, yeah, I'm mystified. I'm really mystified about how they're marketing at the moment. I, I yeah. So Sarah, you were out for the evening last night when you did finally when you did finally see it because you messaged me, didn't you? It's saying it's dropped. Have you seen it? And I, I, did, I, I said, didn't really I said, say whatever, when I you said, did. When you, did me. <laughs> when you when you did see it, I mean, what was your were you were you excited? Sort of uh, coming, booting up your smartphone and finding it. And, yeah, uh, I, if, yeah. Um, I, I was uh, disappointed. And, and maybe that's partly on me for not managing my expectations. I don't know. Um, I, I've seen that argument leveled that, uh, you know, today. In this Twitter. instance, I don't think it is. I but, think it's on there. Know, I th yeah, I think what was wrong with 60 minute, at 60 minutes, 60 second trailer. And I, and I compare it back to the trailer we got for the 50th on that. And I know it was the 50th, not the 60th, but still the spectacle that was there with the Daleks whizzing around and that voiceover. And I just thought that was what it needed. It needed some spectacle. It needed some oomph. Because this just feels like an ordinary episode, almost like a twee episode. Because Beep the Meep, you know, only like the diehard fans really know what that is. You know, yeah, the no, but nobody the, knows who Beep the Meep is. There's a lot of Doctor general, Who fans that have no idea who Beep the Meep is. The general, yeah, the general oh. public are just going to think, oh, that's another funny creature in yeah, Doctor Who. It, it hasn't got the, And yeah, and it, I can't know. 
it's gen it's genuinely got people excited which is brilliant because it's based on the comic and that's fantastic but for the general audience especially the general audience that have been watching Eurovision and you just see David Tennant, Catherine Tate and a little cute alien thing there's nothing you know that there was nothing to wow you and yeah I was just uh yeah I just found it really bizarre it, what it seems to me uh, about managing expectations I, I know I say that quite a lot don't I in this instance though Sarah I don't think you're the one that's at fault I think it's them that are at fault uh, cards on the table I think this is a good trailer I think it's I think it's fine but I'd be a lot more impressed had I not seen the one at Christmas if this was the first trailer and that's that's the problem there are there are people on social media who uh, I think it's have had a mixed reaction. It's, it's not that it's... I, I don't like sitting here complaining about something that is good. This is a decent trailer in its own right. But it's it's when you line it up with, uh, with the bigger picture, Charlotte, what we've had before, where this is going, uh, and the, the precise place in the anniversary year that we're at now. I suppose back in 2013... At least we'd had, they'd given us the split season, hadn't they? And we'd had half of that around Easter time. At this point, the last episode of Doctor Who that was aired was The Pair of the Doctor. And that was on at the end of October. So this has been five, six, we're, we're now seven and a half months since the last episode of Doctor Who was, was on television. That, and before that, that had been the first episode in since the March. You know, it's been eight or nine months. So for the general public, it's getting on, it's well over half a year before any of them ever get a whisper of anything to do with Doctor Who. And you can see why a lot of them, that any of the kind of fervour of seeing Tennant again, not so much in the episode, because not that many people watch The Power of the Doctor, but at least that made the news. <laughs> you know, that, that clip of Tennant returning, it electrified not just Doctor Who, but um, British television for a couple of days where mm. people, people were coming to, certainly me, that I think they were coming to you too and asking about it. But this, several months on now, the general public do not keep these things in their heads the way that fans do, I think, Sarah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, yeah, and, and I think what you're pointing to, to to there, back in like the 50th, for example, the brand was in a lot of a stronger place. Obviously, yeah. Matt was starting to get a bit of a... It was like the view viewing figures were starting to dip a little bit under Matt, from my memory at that point. But it was still a powerhouse, Doctor Who. It was, it was still, still immensely about. culturally significant. Mm. It's still at that weight. And because of the era we've just had, it's now at the smallest sort of power it's ever been. So in order to get any attention, it needs to be bigger than it probably needs. Then it's maybe you could argue it needs to be bigger than fairly other shows would have to be, but other shows haven't got themselves in the state that this show's got itself in. <laughs> no. And I think another thing is, like, I was thinking, if they didn't... I've got a vibe that they want to keep as many story and sort of that aspect locked down as possible for this. Like, like they really that. want us in the dark for as long as they can, like, possibly have that. So I was thinking, if you don't want to give us that stuff... Okay, I can think of other trailers which didn't give me a lot of story or possible beats, but they were creative. They had an imagination about them. I was thinking to be fair, that... do you think what do you think that's what this is about? Because the several interludes in this, particularly in the middle of the trailer, where elements of the screen break up again and redacted, uh, we don't hear what anybody's saying. There are clearly elements on screen that haven't been finished yet that they're or things that they're obscuring. So do you think that's them doing that as well? That I think it's to them that trying. Like, I do honestly think it's them trying. But we've had this idea of interference quite a few times in marketing So many times. Now. And yeah. again, only fans are going... There's only fans that are going to care. Everybody else, anybody, the general audience, is just going to assume that it's the latest sci-fi looking... Yeah, effect, it's like, and as, it's like, I was thinking back to one of Matt's early ones for this example of, okay, if you don't want to give me any proper story stuff, at least give me something that's different. Like when it was early in this series five, when he was when he was lied down on the grass with Amy and they were looking at yeah. the stars. Oh, that was beautiful, that And, the, and it exploded. Yeah. And then, do you know what I mean? Like that didn't yeah. give you any story, any beats for what to expect for the series, but it was an imaginative and creative image. And also, looking back, my God, yeah, it's only when you think back 
now, isn't it? Or, or after a passage, certain passage of time, not necessarily 13 years. But what I was saying earlier, Sarah, that there's no narrative to that particularly, but yeah. it beautifully now it, it set the tone for what the Matt Smith era was going to be like, wasn't it? It looked and felt different fr from the end of time and everything that Russell had done just a few months earlier. It's, it's, it felt like a big freshen up. And everybody yeah. I know who's, who saw that said, wow. I know I, things are different now, but... And again, it and it was so simple. And I think so, simple is best. You know, I'm worried that, the you know, all this redacted stuff, they're confusing it for the sake of, you know, being confusing. Uh, because yeah, I, well, TV moves but, on, doesn't it, Sarah? And uh, gimmickry and the way that things are marketed, that moves on too. But it's... But the audience audiences grow ever more sophisticated don't they and certain things that used to captivate and fascinate even five years ago and they're quite old hats aren't they and and as much as i love cozy old doctor who and as much as i respect russell t davis and I, I, i'm always standing up for russell t davis on, on the various strands of type 40 because i do think this man is a visionary he's also 60 years of age he's, he's been in this industry for a very long time and uh, whilst I don't think this looks dated, I do. I am starting to wonder whether his instincts are twenty years out of date as to how to market this kind of thing. Well, that uh, possibly, but then that that should be down to the team, and he just uh, employed a load of people to do the marketing. Because it takes all that. Say. I know that without those emojis and, all, and that's all very 2023 yeah. little emojis of, but that's not what I mean that that is that's just surface gloss as well I, I, again I must sound I'm conscious of the fact that I must sound like, like a right miserable prick here <laughs> no, I, know it, no, yeah. I, know. I, I have been now since Bad Wolf took this over I have been sh uh, shouting from the rooftops how exciting this is I loved the Christmas trailer and mm -hmm. and I would have loved this there's nothing not to not to like as regards sense of scale of the characters seem completely true to who they were before uh, David Tennant looks completely invested in whatever he's doing you would never think this guy had been away and neil patrick harris it's sensational casting for this and everything just looks wonderful but if you why am i so you, miserable <laughs> if because of the effort of what we were saying on thursday's show about oh, having these wonderfully interactive trailers that the fans yeah. just you know i enjoyed about. those more i enjoyed yeah. the whole team well, thing then, I did. it was the whole fun of it and the fact is the fact that they worked out that this transmission came from Eurovision, that set up people's expectations. And what we got was sadly just more of the same. And yes, it's it's absolutely fine. Like you were saying, the clips all look fine. The quality looks good. In fact, I think some of the effect shots Stunning. look a bit more polished, don't they, than the Christmas one. But it's just... Yeah. In fact, but, but, but it they've, looks done, like they've gone back yeah. into it, Sarah, and they've yeah. they've done extra extra work on the special effects and the grading because yeah. some of the scenes, some of the excerpts we got were the same shots as in yeah. the Christmas trailer, which I didn't originally spot. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, that, that looks fantastic. It really does. But again, after just having that, yeah, where you're thinking... Oh yeah, we're going to get something. We, aren't we clever fans? We've figured it out. We've joined the dots and what have you. Then just to get more of the same, it was just kind of a bit, just a little bit deflating. Um, and I, I believe there's another, um, another binary message. Are we talking about that? There, there is indeed. Yeah, there's, there's something tucked away, uh, but it's again. <laughs> See, I do feel that the reward should have been greater. It's not let, get more things for you to uh, for you to pick your way through. So I I have uh, where where is that? So I, I do actually have that. You think well, you can't? It's one thing to ask to task your fans to be creative and to and to engage and to engage with the material like that. I understand why they. Well, they push us when they know how devoted that we all are. But come on, come on. I thought I'd got that, but it looks like I haven't. I was um, going to say, I, yeah. th I think, honestly, that's the problem. It just feels like they're rehashing. Mm. And your marketing should never feel like you're rehashing. 
I mean, would we feel differently if there wasn't that Eurovision thing on the end? If it if it had just popped up before Eurovision, like it's mm. popped up with other things, would we have just been, oh, there's been another teaser? I, yeah, I but, that, then, that is... but then I would have just been like, oh, it's another teaser. Yeah. yeah. And the problem is the more they do these little teasers, and I think this is the possible risk they've got now, because they've done so many little teasers, fans aren't going to know when's when the actual trailer is going to drop mm. when the proper first trailer because it it just it's better to sometimes not say anything for a bit and then wow people mm. then do lots of little things that all feel the same yeah because then when you do want to do your big ta-da moment i think the impact is less honestly yeah, yeah i'd agree with that yeah well, there's something that yeah, you, you've got to you've got to simply deliver deliver the goods. There's no there's no ifs and buts about it. You can't you can't just say okay, here's another here's another nugget exactly the same as the one you'd got before. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable for people to be to be disappointed. I've seen it. Again, it's not got too tribal on social media with this. Let's say opinion has been divided, reception has been divided. There's a lot to be said. I, I do understand the philosophy that, again, after five years of, an, of increasingly bad production, increasingly lower profile, it's an enormous relief to see the series looking alive again. And just to see something, because you know, Chris Chibnall, he, he, if, he didn't even tell you when it was going to be on <laughs> at, at all. You know, he seemed to resent the fact that other people had to see it at some point. I'm sure if he could have screened it for just his wife and his kids, uh, he'd have been perfectly fine. But yeah, we did. This is the this is the binary thing that you were talking about, Sarah. So yeah. do you want to, what, what does it say there? Can you read backwards? Because it's... <laughs> <laughs> ah. No, funnily enough, no, I've got the wrong glasses on. It says binary, binary, binary. I don't want to go. Oh, that's what Tenant's doctor said. Okay, that's the link. Yeah, yeah. So more hearkenings back to to the era, to the original Russell T Davies era, and those final words of the tenth doctor. I do hope those aren't the final words of the fourteenth doctor too. But it does or anybody who was sort of holding out for the character to be different for Tenant's new doctor to be different? It does seem to be the case. I think if you had any had any doubt that that wasn't going to happen, then that you will do by now. But Donna's very much back in character, isn't she? That's <laughs> there's no mistaking Donna Noble played by Catherine Tate and this yeah. is uh, very mimetic isn't it when she as you said Sarah she comes across beep the meep there in it looks like some sort of fun fair doesn't it that she's gone to with a, with a daughter a great a great moment um Donna is obviously 10 12 maybe even 15 years older at this point than when we last saw her but uh, people change people evolve but people are people. It's perfect. This is perfectly fine, isn't it? That she's not she's not turned into some sort of quiet little old <laughs> middle aged woman. <laughs> and it's just it, it's a lovely scene, but like I think so too. Just but that was the one that they wanted, you know, bet all the cards on. <laughs> it would have been nice to start something again. I, I go back to it, a bit more spectacle, uh, but mm. I mean, yeah, it is. It, it was a lovely scene. I would have actually quite liked to have seen a snippet of Bernard, maybe. With the family now, I think that would have... Oh, yeah, that would have thought the, everybody. The internet yeah. Bernard Cribbins is in this. It was his final role before the, the TV and movie legend, the great British actor Bernard Cribbins, passed away. Apparently, they, they have let it be known that he didn't... Uh, film although they did film substantial amounts of material they didn't complete their their filming with him on everything they wanted so i, I don't know how whether that's going to be noticeable or not i, I do hope he's in a, a good chunk of it still and yeah because obviously the man was an, uh, an integral part wasn't he of of that era in the first place and that family unit i don't i don't have any hankering to see to see the character i hope they resist killing the character off i think that would be I don't think they'll hope. do that. I, I don't yeah. think. I think Russell's got too much respect, mm. and that whole crew actually. You know, how Tennant ad adored Bernard. You could yeah. see that. Yeah. So I don't named think they'd do that. Son after him, isn't he? In fact, I think he's named. Yeah, he na one of his sons is called Wilfred, isn't it? Tennant. Yeah, and I think they've named yeah. a, a, one of their pets as well. Has got a name to do with him. Bernard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a thing. It's definitely a thing. So yeah, beep, beep the meep is is in this is completely uh, yeah accurate. 
really to the to the comics it's all very very exciting and this that moment too is pretty much bang on to uh, where the characters discovered in the comic books too and we've got the wraith guards too they're there in the trailer so we've got beautiful david gibbons imagery there recreated probably as faithfully as as it could ever really be on screen and oh, yeah it's a bit of a childhood dream to see these things stomping around and and firing off guns and all that kind of thing I'm, i am i am psyched for this i don't want to be the uh, the debbie downer that's the expression isn't it but yeah <laughs> i i don't know uh, i mean the highlights highlights are again simply the fact that it's got sort of polish to it and it's distinctive and we hear the the doctor who the doctor who theme tune yes as uh, yeah, recognizably the russell t davies theme tune as arranged by by murray gold performed by murray gold then that accompanies doesn't it the 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 vortex from yes. those series and that's where we get the the titles of these episodes revealed on screen don't we they give they do give us all of these uh, which obviously this is new we didn't know that these episodes were called were called under these titles were titled this way i mean i think we could have really have guessed that the first one was going to be called the star beast but uh, the special number two wild blue yonder which to me sounds like a search engine uh, and special number three the giggle which i i don't know what that sounds just sounds like a clown or something does it? <laughs> it sounds like a horror film all right again yeah. The That's the one. most Russell T Davies title I think I've ever seen. <laughs> so, the giggle. It could be think, uh, a stroke of genius, Sarah. Could be. It could be. It could be something really. Uh, you know, we, we, we have we've had blink, we've had smile. So why not the giggle? It, just, <laughs> it doesn't bother me as such as. No, me neither. <laughs> Right. Again, only fans are going to care about this. I, again, I just feel like it, it was a bit of a waste of an occasion. They could have just done this in a press release and we'd have all been excited. <laughs> but seeing that Time Vortex, yeah, it, it did move me, I've got to say. I, I just have such a fondness for that. Because they've idea. revealed the titles, it, it has got me wondering because they're quite nondescript even the star beast if you've never read that comic or you're not in the know even the title of the star beast is quite nondescript so i'm now starting to wonder will this season this mini series have an umbrella title like the trial of a time lord or god forbid flux do you think they could go yeah. down that road charlotte they could because also at the moment they're specials they're named under that and usually they would only ever do that if they were part of a series that they've done that before special one two and three so they could and like to be honest titles unless they're absolutely ridiculous don't really make me excited for episodes it's just sort of like oh they're called that yeah. so it was it's nice that we are getting slowly bits of it revealed with the 60th that's been my gripe for a while this secret nature so it's nice that they're slowly starting to show us things very very slowly these episode titles did leak onto the internet earlier that afternoon one fan oh site uh, uh claimed that they made an error and and posted that <laughs> stuff early uh, i don't know <laughs> they, same no. same fan site seems to like habits of, of these errors I, it's almost as if i don't know but you've got to take these things with a pinch of salt i suppose so yeah people did latch on to the fact that we see the russell t davis uh vortex they're backing up backing up those titles sarah and they wonder you know does this mean that the the actual episodes are going to have the original credit sequence from the russell t davis era but it, it does seem that they're not russell t davis was all over this on instagram mm -hmm. uh, charlie woodward charlie woodward media even asked uh, it's always nice to have uh, having something to really look forward to those titles vortex look great as well and he replied to charlie oh that's just the old vortex charlie so i i do think that they they're not the titles is what i'm picking up from that yeah. it's there I, just because I, I, I think they've already shown us a bit in that first teaser yeah there is, there is i think that's really my book yeah the second there. And i and I, I i think it should only be right that it's the diamond logo that pops up 
during the credits, especially for the anniversary year. So, and the that, diamond logo yeah. wouldn't wouldn't look right in the two thousand and six title sequence, would no, it? It would just no, wouldn't it look right. Look right, and uh, yeah, and they made such a song and dance about showing us that lovely updated diamond logo. So yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be on the credits. When it comes to uh, special occasions and anniversaries, of course, it's understandable that Doctor Who fans have expectations based on past examples, isn't it? You know, more ideally, more Doctors turning up, and uh, I suppose just as important, though, as regards uh, selling us on higher stakes, is the the villain. It has to be a formidable villain played by a great actor who can at the who can chew the scenery certainly <laughs> and take it up several notches but also be they, I think they do have to be good actors to sell on that to sell us on that there has to be a theatricality but a um a weight as well I don't think you can bring in any old ham and it does seem to be the case that uh, you know, Patrick Harris, I think any doubt that anybody ever had that he was playing the Celestial toy maker must be out of the window. We've we've heard Michael Goff's cackle as well in one yes. of the one of the Tingle teasers. So it does seem that this character's vintage villain, who only ever appeared the once in a story that doesn't even exist anymore, that he is uh, that he's back. Uh, I suppose we'll have to wait to hear the toy maker properly until whatever it is we're going to get we're going to get next. But. Again, it's that it's that drip. We all know who this character is. There'd be no harm in confirming it explicitly now, I think, Charlotte. <laughs> I, I think they have. And honestly, I don't think they need to now. I think they've shown enough clips of him. I think that my favourite bit of the whole trailer was that scene when he's dancing with Tennant. Because I was... I, swear, I love the nature that we're already seeing as a preview. I said this on Type 40 Live. He just has this air of untouchability and that he can just do whatever yeah. he wants and nobody can really stop him and i think as your main villain that's what you want and i think in the last especially new who has suffered a little bit from having really at times over the top cartoony villains who know their yeah. villains and they act <laughs> like their villains whereas he, he doesn't give me that vibe like i said it's no. this almost calm I can just do this and I can just do that and I'm not cackling. It seems, ah. it does seem as if that whatever he's doing, he's doing it to, I, su I suppose if you've seen the story, the classic story Enlightenment, Sarah, you've got these eternal omnipresent characters, a bit like yeah. Q in Star Trek The Next Generation, yeah. who does a lot of this stuff to pass the time, to amuse himself. Exactly. People, are, people, ephemeral life is kind of like a play thing and reality itself is a play thing. Yeah, definitely getting Q vibes. And again, yeah, because I just decides on a whim, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And again, I think Charlotte's right. We, we've had very little. In fact, the only thing I can really think of is the dream load in Amy's Choice. Yes. That's the closest I think we've ever got to. And he was a really underrated villain. I'd like to have seen, seen more of him. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I just he is definitely something that I'm really looking forward to because he plays it with such relish we can see that in the trailer and I think there's going to be a really good you know confrontation between the two of them I mean, it's, going to, it's going to be so much fun I suppose even on the off chance Sarah that the members of the public because Neil Patrick Harris is a very well known face isn't he from TV and yeah. movies and from theatre so, but mm -hmm. even if people don't recognise him particularly from just the flashes they get there the fact that the the Doctor, again, David Tennant as the 14th Doctor seems very much in the moment. And if he looks intimidated or scared, if he tells you that the situation is desperate, because he's such a great actor, mm -hmm. you instantly believe him, even in the three or four seconds <laughs> that we yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that, he manages to communicate that really beautifully. And whilst I, I'm not going to, I can't give this trailer uh, a pass. I think it, I think it's, um, it's not enough. Uh, David Tennant just looks electrifying and, and looks like he's having the time of his life and I, I, he's probably a better actor now than, than he was in 2009 let alone 2005 Well, well he's had a lot ago. more experience hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah And I he think looks that's great as well 52 I, I just, years old I, I just think if Russell needs to I think he will I have every confidence he will 
But when you've got somebody as experienced as Tennant as your leading man, you lean on that. And I'm just, he will. I can't see him not doing that. No, no. So, yeah, I can't help but feel that I wouldn't call it a damp squib. But I do feel that I understand the people who are deflated at the end of a weekend that I think we were all really looking forward to. We thought the curtain was finally coming down on the 60th anniversary, but it's, it's sort of still half up, really. It's sort of only partially, partially pulled back. Um, yeah, so has this, has this uh, knocked your enthusiasm, Dan? I mean, e either of you, uh, because it, do it does feel that we're kind of being blown about in the wind a little bit by by Bad Wolf, the BBC, and Disney Plus on the 60th anniversary. We've seen so so little. I don't know if it knocks mine. It's just getting a bit frustrated. I'm getting a bit frustrating now with it because, like I said, I we know loads. I feel like about shooty stuff. I feel like I know more. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we do. We know more <laughs> than the 60th, yeah. and it's been filmed ages ago. And it's like, I understand, like I said, I understand you, you can't show all your cards, but at the end of the day, you need to give us something to latch on to. And I feel like at the moment, we're still floating a bit in the air as to what on earth the 60th yeah. actually is going to be. Yeah, I agree. And I think they need to give us a little bit of a tether, something. I think, yeah, I think frustrated is the word. I think... I think they might be in danger of taking us for granted, which was, you know, one of the biggest mistakes that Chibnall did. But yes, you, you've you've garnered all this goodwill. You've got Tennant back. You've got Tate back. We've got Neil Patrick Harris. You know, we've got Bernard Cribbins. We've got um, the Noble family. We've got Beep the Meep. Um, but yeah, you've got you, you've got you've still got to give us something. You know, this this is this publicity has got to run until the autumn and if it's already feeling like you're just rehashing the same old scenes i just think they're going to lose any kind of momentum because i feel like these past sort of two or three weeks has been some real momentum and i think that's yes, why I know. you could feel it building and you yeah. could feel fandom fandom being brought together by it as well only 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 bit by bit because the fandom mm. is still quite fractured but you could yeah. feel it coming together and I think, again, I think that's just why we all got excited. And I think that's why a lot of fandom do kind of feel a bit deflated. And I just, I don't know, I just feel like they had, they had a real moment to capitalise on it. And I just feel like they've missed it. And now I think it's going to take a while now for it to pull back up again. And, and they really need to. And don't take the fans for granted. Cause we really want to like this. We are, we're interested. You know, we're desperate <laughs> for more crumbs off his table. Um, but like Charlotte was saying, I feel like the focus has been on season 15 rather than the 60th. Yeah, and, and also... They could be using that as a diversion, Charlotte, couldn't they? It's like, look at this, look at this. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that in case they've got fit people that they're trying to keep secret that we don't well, don't get that, too stuck into. Or they're not even the paparazzi. Uh, don't ask too many questions. I remember a while ago, I can't remember when Tennant basically said, oh, we filmed a load of stuff in, in like, studio behind closed doors. With like, a lot there's of loads people, of people said, didn't you don't know who are in this. And I'm feeling like, okay, BBC, you need to start rolling out some of these actors that I feel like you have got He said, he said something like, they've got the easy job because people don't, because he says everybody knows that Catherine and I, and I are in it, so they keep asking us. But anybody else who was in it, and he, he said it's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, nobody, and, the, and that's knows. the other issue. It's like, we know Catherine and <laughs> Tennant's in this. Like Starry said, that's what the fans are going to get excited about. And the general audience to an effect, but it's those characters that we love that we're going to get excited about. But that's all we've seen. You need like a real class act British actor or actress that a lot of people are going to go, oh, they're in Doctor Who, I'll watch it. That's mm -hmm. what I think yeah. they need right now. It's a, yes, it's a very strange position we find ourselves in. As I say, I'm, I'm the guy I've been, I wouldn't say eternally optimistic about this. There are certain things in the recent months that have had me wondering, you know, are they really, are they really on the right page? 
generally speaking, I've still got faith in them, but it, it is being tested because frankly, this trailer was a considerable disappointment, the, the trailer itself. Yeah, the content, yes, it's good, it's nice, it's polished and everything looks sumptuous, but it's the same as the last one, just a, a kind of a remix of the same elements. There's literally nothing new apart from these titles. And whilst Doctor Who fans, we love knowing this stuff in advance, and going off and making making fan art and posters and uh, <laughs> people knock up, don't they? Uh, faux uh, DVD and Blu-ray sleeves for these episodes that haven't been screened, screened yet. But the norm is that you're flashing this, the 8 million people who saw this, you're flashing these words up on screen in front of them. They don't care. It's just labelling. And even worse. <laughs> I think the Eurovision it's... songs for all they know. Yeah, especially exactly. people. I, I think that it, it's admin. This is really who cares what these things things are called, because he can't put it into context at all. I mean, I've, I've told myself maybe they're saving it up for San Diego Comic Con. That's in mid July this year. There, uh, we I believe that Russell intends on being there, but we haven't got a certain on it. But to be honest, I mean, this is now, so that's eight or nine weeks away as of recording. But the way things are going during this 60th anniversary year, you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to be building up my hopes that we're going to see anything on this either, because if the last two weeks were anything to go by. So uh, uh, how, yeah, once bitten, twice shy. I, I do feel I do feel there's only so many times they can lead us up, up the garden path and not deliver something. So uh, what do you think? Could, is, it worth, is it worth holding our breath until Comic-Con, Sarah? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think <laughs> well, again, I think it's, so it's such a long time, eight to nine weeks. So like all that momentum is just going to fall off a cliff. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, because there isn't anything really. The other vision was well, the big event. I mean, there isn't anything now till what Wimbledon for the, for like the general public. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's probably going to be it now till <laughs> Diego. <laughs> How about you, Charlotte? Well, Doctor Who in past years, especially during Russell's run and Moffat, they were both quite good at going to Comic Cons and doing a panel and yeah. getting everybody excited. So it's definitely, he's it's in his wheelhouse and he can do it. And I think there's plenty of things you can say about Russell, but you can say he's a showman and he's very good at selling anything if he's actually there talking about it. So it will he'll make it sound like the most exciting thing ever. Like he'll he'll be all the usual Russell sort of mannerisms, yeah. but I just think, like Starry said, they can't keep expecting us to go. Oh, this time we'll get something because you can only do that so many times. We got to calm down, wait, keep yourselves calm, don't get too excited. Oh God, okay, okay. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and we know Doctor true fans are the most patient fans in the world. Yes, <laughs> we're so patient. As this video will be showing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. There are people have said to me that I've, I'm being a little unreasonable in this to expect something, to expect anything from a TV event that is still half a year away, and I'd I would be singing exactly the same tune. Had they not chosen, they chose to do this. Russell T. Davies, I know, I know why he did it. He had the best of intentions. He was, he was self-conscious that for the first time since the show came back, there was nothing for Doctor Who fans over the Christmas and New Year period or on Christmas Day. So we got that surprise trailer. And I feel that they may have shot themselves in the foot because that effectively the publicity campaign for these specials, for this anniversary miniseries started on Christmas Day. It hasn't started now. And if but if it had started now, I'd I'd be feeling a little a little differently. I yeah, I know they may have had the best of intentions, Sarah, but uh <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, yeah, let's hold out, I suppose, for Comic Con and see what happens. See what happens then. See what we get. Yeah, that's uh, the twentieth of July. I think the twentieth to the twenty second of July in San Diego, as always. Please like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel and hit the cloister bell to get all the notifications about what we're doing next here at Type Forty and Type Forty Live and when we're doing it. I think we should look at a, a pretty picture to sort of cheer ourselves up. Don't you? What do you think? What do you think? I've got uh, something here. I've got something. So, okay, this is um, 
this is what we this is what we got in the trailer. We got this. Now this looks a little bit like it's a, an expansive area. It looks like a command center. It could be units or something like that. And the doctor is being plagued, isn't he, by this shadowy puppet-like apparition from something like a horror film. So that's what we got. But what we really wanted, what we really wanted, I think, was something like this, wasn't it? What do you think? Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Yes, yes, yes. Is that a bit yes. more like... <laughs> Charlotte's very, very happy. Uh, yeah, so the vision of Matt Smith there on the on the big screen, I don't know, maybe, yeah, so maybe if we're patient, still, we'll get something like that. I still think there's a chance of... Doesn't that? After all, this is the, the 60th anniversary year what do you think are we are we just a bunch of miserable sods are we being impatient are we being unreasonable i've been hanging on with ian too long yeah it's ian infected <laughs> us <laughs> love you ian yeah. <laughs> let us know what you think in the comment section what do you make of this trailer is it hitting all your buttons this is absolutely fine you don't know what we're talking about yeah we're all ears whatever you know what it's like at type 40 all views are absolutely fine and uh, yeah we'll we'll get back to you in the comments section i suppose stay tuned to the channel for type 40 live as always every thursday from 8 p.m and you can yeah you can go there and find us decoding the uh, those tingle teasers from the on the last edition there and yes see our enthusiasm our blind enthusiasm <laughs> before before this all happened right i suppose i suppose that's it really so where can people find you on social media sarah you can find me on twitter at starry eyed girl and i'm also on facebook yes yeah, so that's that's that there they are social media episode. and how about you charlotte where can people hear uh, and see you, more of you you'll catch me on type 40 like i'm for social media the type 40 facebook group now and again mm -hmm. And then you'll catch me on podcasts as well and just floating about YouTube a little bit. Yeah, come come and vent at us in the Type 40 Facebook groups, by all means. There's the Type 40, there's the Type 40 Doctor Who Facebook group, a very social community full of uh, regenerations upon regenerations worth of Doctor Who fans there. So there's people going on about the classic series and reliving the uh, the iconic Doctors from the 60s, the 70s and the 80s. And those who joined with the new series doing exactly the same when it comes to the, uh, the 9th and the 10th, the 11th and 12th Doctors. And there's a good chunk of us as well. You know, it's a little more contentious when it comes to the all new stuff. People are uh, growing in their uh, uncertainty about what's to come in all new Doctor Who. But as always, it's a home for all opinions there in the Type 40 Facebook group. I think that about covers it for now. Heaven knows what they're going to serve us next. But yeah, let us know in the comments section what you think of it all, our opinions and whatever else. And I suppose... We'll see you on the next one. We always have the time. If you have the space here at Type 40 Extra, say goodnight, guys. Good night, <laughs> good night. Good night. I'll speak to you later in the week, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>